I love you. <laughs> Happy Love Day, everybody. Happy Love Day. As you can see, we decorated. Yes, obviously. It's all <laughs> so much pink. Oh, of course. I yeah. considered it. I considered it for a second. Part of me was like, do I stop by Walgreens and get some last minute clearance candy? I thought about I, I I was thinking that and I was like, well, it's not going to be clearance because today's the day. Yeah. So and it would be one day. And also, I was like, I could make red lights, but red looks bad. Yeah. Like, red lights don't look yeah. that good. Anyway, so, uh, so this is what you get. Yeah, deal with it. Whatever. Uh, guys, hello. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, everybody who's subscribing or whatever. I forgot to open up the Streamlabs. <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of things to talk about. The title of the episode $70 Games. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm sure you all know why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. $70. Big game. Yeah. Big price. Literally a big game. I thought we'd do something different oh. this time. Oh. Uh, before we get into that, why don't we talk about the uh, Nintendo Direct? Because I, everybody already knows my opinion. I talked yes. about it thousands all over the place. Nobody knows what you think. <laughs> so I want to go through everything really quick, and okay. I want to hear you interject with some of the okay. things you want to say. But so, but shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> shut your stupid mouth. Jay Bonilla, thanks for the two months. Caleb Fox, thanks for the eight months. Happy Valentine's Day, Wolf Bros. Thanks for taking Thank time out of your day for all oh my God. Thank you so much. Always. Thanks for, th thanks for taking time away from your wife on Valentine's yes. Day, <laughs> is what you're saying to me. <laughs> Uh, Jeffrey Sorensen, thank you for the 11 months. Glad you guys both have girls who go to other schools so you can spend tonight <laughs> with the boys as usual. I, I like to equate it as like, um, you know, the, the wife of a cop. She knows that, the fuck? He, that he's got cop things to do and like he's got to go out and do cop stuff and he might not come home. But <laughs> Jesus he's, Christ! But he's—it's his job. It's, you know. This is the cop stuff. Yes. What we do is, yeah, yes. it's very yes. similar to what cops do. Yes, exactly. exactly. It's the same sort yes. of righteousness. Yes, with a lot less racism. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> King Rat, thanks for the six months. I finally back. Hello, welcome uh, back. Think? Welcome back. And Dark Type, thanks for the hundred bits. If there's one thing I love more than video games, it's the Wolf Den. Happy Val. Oh my God! Oh, happy Valentine's. Happy Day. Valentine's Day. I want to say what I've been doing, Will, this past week. Uh huh. Uh, not the past week, the past day and a half. I've been watching, uh, what's his name? I think Ben Saint. Eight hour long lore explanation of Mega Man. <laughs> Mega Man? Yeah. Mega Man X. Mega Man Zero. Uh huh. Mega Man Legends. Okay. Battle Network? Out the window. Don't <laughs> count. So is is it just lore explanation of each individual series or is he trying to game oh okay each game <laughs> okay but my question is is he trying to connect like regular to x to zero like yes okay Th there are connections okay. I, I haven't i'm only two and a half hours right in, okay and we barely scratched the surface of Mega Man x okay. he's doing it in chronological i i'm, I'm saying this as if it's happening now. <laughs> the video is two months old. Okay, but uh, it it it's chronological. Uh, it's it's release order. He's doing it in release order. Okay. So we hit Mega Man X, a couple of Mega Man X games, and it goes back to like seven, I think. So okay. that's where I'm at right now. I'm back at seven. Okay. Um, and there is the timeline's the same. There is bleed over. Right. Yeah. So okay, because I I watched uh the game theory episode on sonic frontiers and how that's breaking sonic lore uh -huh. and sonic frontiers is trying to basically make everything canon yeah uh i did not realize that because i'm not paying attention to that stupid story at all I, I really tried to get through sonic frontiers i don't i i don't like the open world See, stuff i am enjoying it despite like the problems that may be that may be in the game because like mm -hmm. i it's for a sonic game it's shockingly relaxing like, I can just yeah. like chill and like just explore the open world and like I'm doing things in it. I'm getting frustrated you know? in the open world. I, so I just want to unlock levels and play I know, a level. But, like I'm I'm finding it oddly relaxing, which is weird for a Sonic game. Okay. Usually I'm like on the edge of my seat, but like I am very much enjoying it. That said, the story in the game is terrible. It is <laughs> horrendous. It is the wrong style and tone for a Sonic the Hedgehog game. There's a cutscene and I don't know if you saw this where like Sonic and Knuckles watch like a war happening and everyone's no. dying <laughs> that kind of happened in forces 
Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how like, it opens. Well, <laughs> Forces still had like a cartoony edge to it. This is like deadly fucking serious. And then they like sit there and go, these people lost everything. Well, they're not going to die in vain. We're going to fight for them. We're going to set things right. <laughs> and I'm going to beat you to it. <laughs> oh, my it's, God. It's just so... I heard Bad. that it has like a fantastic ending, and that's why I want to get through. I'm it. sure. I, I hope it does. Because I you're... like Sonic, and I like the stupid lore. And but stuff. like, I but... like those shitty '90s game characters and their <laughs> shitty lore. I like that stuff. But I mean, there's there's a certain tone you have to hit to do it right. Like colors and generations. Th- those were written by the guys behind Happy Tree Friends, and like those what? hit like the, yeah, <laughs> those hit like the right tonal beats hell? for me yeah i did not because like that. it was it was like fun and lighthearted. like it got like dramatic but it never like lost the plot this one this game thinks it's metal gear solid sometimes <laughs> with how serious and like philosophical it gets i mean there's some shit in Mega Man that like you're like what the hell like <laughs> yeah. like it's like majorly like effed up yeah well the reason i brought that up even was because uh he talks about the the guy Ben Saint talks about yeah. how you know Maverick Hunters and Mega Man X they're basically like robot cops. Yeah, and he's like I don't like saying that because I hate cops, <laughs> but I like the Maverick Hunters because it makes sense in that world. I and he goes I guess it, that's what I think cops should be. It, <laughs> I, I, it got really fucking weird yeah but i was like kind of on the same page i was like i get what you're saying yeah yeah but they're still like you know it's it's fucking rope they're yeah, robots yeah, yeah. they're fighting other robots anyway Ugh. i thought it was very funny um what are we talking about why are we here the nintendo direct <laughs> right yeah. we should talk about that yes uh um, anyway yes so we haven't heard anything that you right think about well I'm you just, you put polygon in here is that in order because they and nintendo that's, has their own thing. that's not in order i just thought that was more of uh because the nintendo one is it's in order but it's like you gotta click for details and stuff okay the polygon one is just like it gives you like a breakdown of everything all right let's go through the polygon one. okay so first off okay the big one legend of zelda tears of the kingdom yeah looks great uh well will i get it i've launched probably not but not for anything wrong with the game i like breath of the wild just fine uh i am currently trying to play uh sonic the hedgehog breath of the wild, so <laughs> <laughs> games we'll we'll on. hit this later yeah i have things to say about this. uh advanced wars one and two reboot camp now has a date it is coming uh f- april 21st of this year that's exciting for people who like advanced wars one and two uh not this i household. feel like i might like this game i i did play the original it's strategy but it's see it's fun yeah it's nintendo I, I fun remember playing know? the original on gba like years ago because a friend had it and i just couldn't get into it maybe now that i'm older mm-hmm. you know and more willing to like take my time with a game I'll right give it a shot but yeah, I know this game was like famously delayed because of like the ongoing war in the Ukraine. Yeah, and like that... yeah, apparently you can't say the Ukraine. You have to say Ukraine. Ukraine? I got shit for saying. <laughs> oh really? The was... Ukraine. Sorry, I don't leave my house anymore. Apparently that's like a weird like Russian thing. To okay. Do. I don't know. So, but it's coming out anyway. So yeah, no. it, uh, I'm happy it's finally coming out. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo gave up on the war in the in Ukraine. A lot of people, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Not Hollywood though. They keep inviting Zelensky to talk at award Good. shows. Good. Because that Good. will help the war effort. Uh, oddly political Wolf Den uh, podcast. Yes. <laughs> uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Yes. Uh, finally coming to Switch. Um, I'm a little disappointed that Game Boy Advance is locked behind Expansion Pass. Well, you have it. so Yeah, I know. But, what are you complaining about? But Because I, I just feel like there's not that much of a technological difference. I mean, there is. But in terms of like compatibility between Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, mm-hmm. like they they could just just wrap it in one emulator. Yeah, no, yeah. they're it's super just a, a like a cash grab. It's one hundred percent a cash grab. But uh, they need to make more value for the expansion pass. No, they really and do, this yeah. is a way for for them to do it. Do you think maybe like I mean this is a pie in the sky and this will like get into something I want to talk about a little bit later. Um DS might have been a better 
thing for the expansion pass. How they would have gotten that to work, I don't know. No, they could super get DS to work. Yeah. They could super get DS. Because we do it on emulators all the time. True. You put the screen by screen. Yeah. You make one screen a little bigger than the other screen. You hit a toggle to switch back and forth. It, it's it's yeah. super easy. Okay. Um, and it works great on, on the stupid emulators. Yeah. In fact, it works so good that when the Switch was coming out, I was like, backwards compatibility 100%. They're yeah. totally going to do backwards. Yeah, and then they you... didn't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, if they ever do DS, it'll be locked behind a paywall. Mm -hmm. I'm skeptical on what else we will ever see out of Nintendo Switch Online games because, uh, not to go too far ahead, but Metroid Prime Remake. Yes. That is GameCube game. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're ever seeing GameCube games. At this point, no. Probably no. not. And I think they could do the same thing with DS. I think they could sell DS games for like $20 yeah. a pop. I think... Well, I, maybe D, maybe not 3DS, but DS for I sure. feel like um, now, now that we have Game Boy and Game Boy Advance and, you know, to a certain extent, N64, it's a way... Because they basically stopped adding NES and SNES games yeah. to Switch Online. This is a way for them to keep adding games to the service that you can play and like build up that library. Yeah. You know, without having to add to the systems that are already there. I think it's a fantastic... Uh, I mean, Nintendo Switch Online got a lot of crap for having... For, for not letting you buy games individually. Yeah. But having a huge library of games that you might not have played otherwise, I think is, is great. It gives a new audience to some of these great old yeah. games. Like Gargoyle's Quest. Yes. I would have never played Gargoyle's Quest. I yeah. thought about playing Gargoyle's <laughs> Quest. Would have never taken the time to play it. Yeah. Now that it's here, I took the time to play it. Oh, so it. it's fine. It's a Game Boy yeah. game. It's good. It's you yeah. know hard and shit. Yeah, it's better than uh friggin' uh, what we had. Yeah, Gremlins. Right. <laughs> Speaking of which, the guy who bought us Gremlins is in the chat right oh, now. Oh, of course he is. Uh, how can I afford seventy dollars for a stupid video game on my social security check when I have to buy new pants? <laughs> this is our. This is our. This is our father. This is our father. <laughs> I ripped my jeans climbing the cemetery fence to get your mother her Valentine's flowers. There's so many things wrong with that. Oh, wait. Oh, it's a joke. Like he, I was like, wait, what are you doing at the cemetery in Florida? Yeah. It's a joke. He climbed. He was going into the cemetery to get flowers to give oh, to our no, mother. He was grave stealing yes. flowers. Okay, I get it. Uh, report this man. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like cops, so we can have you arrested. I remember? Get I get it. I get it. Anyway, GCXC Luke, thanks for the Prime. Sorry, Wolf Bros. I missed a few months of Prime subs. Blame my 19-month-old. Your 19-month-old is a piece of shit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, as I've learned anything these past three years, it's okay to blame your children. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thor, Thor Vindwarf. Thank you for the Prime. Hi, Wolf Bros. Hello. Thank you for the 12 months. Anyway. Uh, what do you think of the library that we have for Game Boy and Game Boy Advance? Like the games that we have. I mean, it's a start. I'm surprised they didn't put uh, Metroid Fusion in at the at the start. I'm just happy it's there at all, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, what do we got? We got Tetris, uh, Return of Samus, Wario Land 3, um, Super Mario Brothers 2, the Six Golden Coins. Surprised we didn't get the first one. Yeah, that'll definitely come. But yeah. I, I think it makes sense because the first game is bad. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, give us the good one first. Yeah. And then roll out the other one as, like, a nostalgia trip. I am surprised that they put Mario Kart Super Circuit in as, a, like, a launch title for the service. You know, mm -hmm. cons considering it is the worst Mario Kart game. It's very bad. Yeah. I played it to test the multiplayer, and it is, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um. Also, Game & Watch Gallery. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, that was that's a weird one to put yeah. at the start. It, it's there. There is a random assortment of games in here, and you know, hopefully, there's there are a lot of Game Boy games. They could easily fill this out. Like, yeah. over time, with, like better titles. Good there. because they've been stagnating on NES and SNES. Yeah, I mean, well, like I said, now they moved on to N64 and mm -hmm. now GBA and Game Boy Advance. So there was also Game Alone Boy. in the Dark, which is a weird one. Yeah, like I was like shocked by that one because that's a real weird one. I remember when that came out. That was like Alone in the Dark's only good reinvention. Because like <laughs> Resident Evil had knocked off Alone in the Dark. So Alone in the Dark's like, okay, we can fucking do that too. And they knocked <laughs> off Resident Evil. But it was okay. It's not like the later Alone in the Dark games were just as bad. Okay. So. Uh, there's also Wario Land 3. Which yes. is great. Yeah, that's a good one. Somebody I saw on YouTube. I forgot who they were. I started watching the video. It was like 20 minutes long. Uh, they posted a video. Uh, something like. 
people are realizing the greatness of Wario Land 3 or like Wario Land 3 is the best platformer ever made or something like uh-huh. that. And then like the next day they announced the that this was part of Switch Online, yeah. which I thought was crazy. So um, for Game Boy and Game Boy Color, it's Tetris, Super Mario Land 2, Link's Awakening DX, uh, Gargoyle's Quest, Game & Watch Gallery 3, Lone in the Dark New Nightmare, Metroid 2 The Return of Samus, Wario Land 3, and Kirby's Dream Land. Yeah, Coming which I think is a pretty solid yeah. list. Coming soon is Zelda Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages, Pokemon Trading Card Game, and Kirby Tilt and Tumble. What, we've talked about this before, about how we want Game Boy games, and I always said that Game Boy doesn't really have that great of a library. Yeah. And they picked the... They definitely makes they de- they're definitely making it look like there is a great library yeah so well i'm I mean, happy yeah. with what we got the, the thing with the game boy most portable systems like it is that it's very easy to develop for mm-hmm. and very like, inexpensive to develop for so that just they just flood the market with a lot of crap games right right um which just makes the cream rise higher to the top and mm-hmm. this is cream always rises exactly oh yeah <laughs> um i didn't try it i know like there are filters to go between game boy original game boy color palette and game boy color color palette yeah so it's it's original game boy pocket and game boy color so the interesting thing is the game boy color was actually developed by the same team who made metroid 2 samus the return of samus oh and because of that they built into the hardware of the game boy color a special color palette just for return of samus oh so i wonder if that's the color palette you get in this game i'm 90 percent sure it is okay because i mean you you can tell because it like it is full color because usually if you put in a regular game boy game game with color you only get four colors this one's full color well a lot of emulators have been able to do that have been able to achieve that because i think that's built into the game boy player on the gamecube okay so I'm pretty sure it's because because I I have I I when I play this I stick with the Game Boy Color color palette right. because the original Game Boy Color palette is very bad on this yeah. like like it's already bad because it's pea soup but like the Analog Pocket does a great job yeah even some of these other emulators that I have do a great job but this one it's like really like washed out and there's like no contrast at all yeah which I mean there wasn't really on the on an actual Game Boy yeah. but like uh. Come on, give me a little yeah. bit of contrast. Uh, so the Game Boy Color color palette is what I stick it to. And Samus Returns looked really good. I didn't yeah. like okay. look too hard. Okay. I will also say that uh, the grid lines uh, filter is awesome. On this end game, it looks even better on Game Boy Advance. Okay. The grid lines are yeah. sick. And I didn't realize, but uh there's like a ghosting effect on original game boy 2 if you yeah. put on that scan line filter okay. there's a bit of ghosting to make it more cool. like the original so uh i usually don't like to play with scan lines or grid lines like that but i do on game boy advance because it looks that good nice uh and then on game boy advance we got super mario uh, super mario advance 4 super mario brothers 3 warrior inc micro mega games kuru kuru kuruin mm-hmm. uh mario kart super circuit mario and luigi um and zelda the minish cap coming soon metroid fusion kirby and the amazing mirror five uh fire emblem f-zero maximum velocity and golden sun uh golden sun's a big deal yes a lot of people are in, uh yeah. are happy that nintendo's acknowledging that game yeah uh warrior is incredible yes and uh mario is incredible because it's got the e-reader level yes and they're great yeah. it feels like i'm playing mario maker but nice. before yeah. Mario Maker, that's it's, cool. They're, they're a little insane. Yeah. They're a little unhinged, <laughs> and uh, they're very, very hard. Yeah, I'm only halfway through the. I've, I've been playing for almost six hours, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm barely halfway through because I'm trying to get all the coins and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that was the best part of the direct for me, and yeah. I think all of the games are solid, and it's been fun playing all this stuff. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited for it. I hope they add Metroid Zero Mission soon because I really want to play uh, a good version of the original Metroid. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, I am a little interested in Metroid 2. I wasn't a fan of the one on the 3DS. Right. Samus Returns. Right? Yeah. I, I wasn't a big fan of that. It felt very repetitive because mm-hmm. you're fighting the same boss like 16 times right. or something. Um, and I just wasn't into it. So... 
maybe I'd like it more on the Game Boy because it would feel yeah. I, like like it like I would understand like okay this is like a thirty year old game yeah it makes sense why it's a little repetitive yeah anyway uh speaking of Metroid uh yeah Metroid Prime uh the remaster was available that day they just said oh it's available now and it's forty dollars here you go yeah people were like I said like why is it forty dollars like that's a lot and like people were like saying well it's better than sixty and it's better like, than seventy <laughs> yeah and like telling me that I'm wrong. For not liking the fact that it costs forty dollars, I don't mind it being forty, because uh, they they very I, this is Stockholm syndrome. They would have <laughs> charged sixty and gotten away with. They would have, you know, yeah. And like, it's it's not a remake. We should like make like clarify that it, it very clearly says remastered because it is. It's the same game. It just looks well, nicer. Hold and they on, they added new controls to it. I a little bit disagree. Because it's it looks a lot nicer. It looks a lot different. It, they changed all of the textures okay. and some models and stuff. Actually, they changed a lot of models. Like the opening cinematic when you see the the the, the ship that yeah. Samus is coming out of, it has all this other... Uh, uh, it has a lot more detail and stuff right. like coming out of it. Uh, this... And also, they... The credits are... They don't have the original Metroid Prime credits in it. Well, yeah. That's they, a big problem, actually. Yeah, I know. They just have, you know... Uh, the, based on the work yeah. from Retro Studios and on Metroid Prime. Yeah. So, I think this is a remake akin to what they've done on Demon Souls. Like, they made the whole thing over again... And they just made it almost identical to the original. I would that's have, what I. I think. would have to play it to see like more of it, but because to me this looks like it's like what Rare did with Perfect Dark on the Xbox 360, where uh-huh. it was the exact same game, but they added a brand new graphical setting on top of the original right. game, so it just looked nicer. Yeah, uh, everyone still had like blocks for hands, but like it looked nicer. And they added updated modern control schemes to it. See, the thing that usually gives it away are the are the animations. Yeah, like like usually they use the same animations and just put a new like new textures and new yeah, bones. That's what Perfect Dark did. Yeah, yeah, that's what a lot of remasters do. Uh, but this is really hard to tell because yeah. they add they added more animations. Yeah. So like some of them look exactly the same, mean, side the, by side. The but some of them look a little different. The animations for the original Metroid prime were still very good yeah at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so um yeah i don't know man i just from the surface of it that perfect dark remaster on xbox 360 was only ten dollars and i know like it was a long time ago and it was an n64 game things are a little different but thirty dollars i think would have been a better price yes for well yes you know uh yeah uh, uh, yeah ten dollars would have been a better price <laughs> i'm just saying like forty dollars at that point might not throw in echoes the second one game here's my problem i think this was supposed to be the whole trilogy in one shot yeah because this even when the announcer says uh he he says what does he say he says metroid prime is it gonna be in this no it doesn't say it he says metroid prime games but it says in the text game. Okay. So, but I swear to God, it sounds like he says games. Well, we could just skip to this right now. I put an article in the keep. Uh, sure. Apparently, Metroid Prime Remastered was rated by the uh, German ratings board mm-hmm. 18 months ago. Yeah. So they were, they've been sitting on this game for at minimum 18 months. Yeah, no, I, I, so they've, I mean, like, look, I completely believe that this has been sitting on the shelves because yeah. I mean, Metroid Prime has been shit. Metroid Prime four has been sitting on the shelves. Yeah. I mean, we've all seen, like, we've talked about it ad nauseum. Like, oh, Nintendo's just going to release the Metroid Prime trilogy remasters really soon. You know? Yeah. People have been writing about that since the switch came out. Um, now here it is. So how do they know that it, it's been up for 18 months? Uh, f- what does it say? I think. I think if you go to the listing the, shows that Metroid Prime Remaster was originally rated over 18 months ago. What listing? Yeah, the listing on the German rating board. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I believe that. 
that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that back then it was supposed to be the whole trilogy. Right. I, I, here's here's my little uh, 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 conspiracy theory. I think that it was the whole trilogy and it was going to be a port just like Mario Sunshine was. It was just okay. a straight port not doing anything. And then the game, whatever, whoever was making Metroid Prime 4, whatever happened, the game sucked and they didn't want to release it. So they decided to redo the whole thing. And I think whoever was whoever decided to remake Metroid Prime 4 remade the original Metroid Prime or at least some of the assets to try to work with them or see what they can do with the Switch hardware. Okay. And they were like, do you want to use these for the remaster? You can make, easily make a remaster out of this. And they're like, okay, sure. And then they just did. Then they turned the whole trilogy into just one and they made the remaster a grander remaster than it originally was right. going to be. That's my conspiracy theory. Well, the the Metro Prime 4 is now being made by Retro. Right. Um, and I think... Oh, the the remaster is also developed by Retro with assistance from developers including Iron Galaxy Studio. Yeah, Iron Galaxy is a port house. Yes. So I think Retro redid the assets and was like, Iron Galaxy, do you want these? And they were yeah. like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll take those. <laughs> okay. That's what I think. Okay. All right. Um, so here, so allegedly they're sitting on two other games. Yeah. Uh, Prime uh, Echoes and Corruption. Is that part of the rating? No. Oh, okay. This is just part of your conspiracy theory. Y- yes. Okay. Absolutely. So I don't know if they have those remastered, but why not right. at this point? So and I think that they could sell those for forty dollars each, and then have a whole collection for a hundred bucks. Okay. That's what I think is going to happen. So. What I want to talk about is we have we now have the Metroid Prime remake on Switch. Right. We now have Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games right. on Switch. We now uh, next we're going to talk about your game of the year, Pikmin Four, is coming to Switch. Um, and then we have also Advance Wars One and Two. Right. Do you think it is too late for these games to come to the Switch? No. Because it is, I think it might be. Because we've been talking about how it's potentially the end of the Switch's life cycle. Yes. And Zelda is supposed to be like the last big game. Mm -hmm. If that holds true, then that doesn't really give these games a lot of time to like breathe and like be a part of the Switch ecosystem if they're just going to move on to the next system. Well, I'm really holding out hope for some backwards compatibility. Right. I think we all are. Because if they do that, then why not? Yeah. I think we uh, Nintendo games can easily transcend. Uh... Right. But we've also seen Nintendo's willingness to not do backwards. Games. I know. That would be very yeah. bad. So that would be very I mean, bad. If they... I, I mean, if, if we just got Metroid Pro- Metroid Prime 4 is a next-gen con- uh, a game. At this point, yeah. Yeah. We're, 100%. Full yeah. stop. That's why we haven't heard about it. And at this point, they're too late. Yeah. Me- the Metroid Prime trilogy... Mm-hmm. at that point will be coming out on the next system yeah so we got one we'll be getting the other two right closer to when prime four is coming out so uh-huh. i think we're we're jumping the gap we're right. we're jumping over to the next switch it's not too late we're gonna if, if we're not jumping okay. over we're not if i'm not bringing my prime over to to the next system yeah what the fuck are we doing here okay so anyway, you want to run through the rest of the games? Yeah, we got Pikmin, uh, Pikmin Four. Yeah, 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 yeah. there's a dog uh, in it now. Yeah, Samba yeah. Day Amigo, Party Central. Uh, people are excited for that. Joy, uh, I don't know why there hasn't been one. You Joy Cons, perfect yeah, I maracas. Know. I know. Uh, f- Baton Kaitos Remaster. Speaking of GameCube games, uh, we're it's getting a GameCube game. Yeah, Baton Kaitos Eternal Wings of, and the Lost Ocean will get an HD version, uh, I didn't as well that. as the game's prequel, Baton Kaitos Origin. I remember these. I've never played these games, but I remember the box art for these at Target all the time. I don't because this was like one of the rare like JRPGs specifically for the GameCube. I have never heard of this game before in my life. I'm sure if you saw the box art for the first one, you would. There it is. Yes. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, right? yeah, I remember that. Uh, what oh, else? it was developed by the guys who made uh, Xenoblade. Look at that. Dead Cells. With Castlevania shit looks cool. It does. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. That looks cool. Uh Katamari Damacy 
It's We Love Katamari Reroll. Yeah. This is the Xbox 360 game, and now it's coming to Switch. I think they're both PS2 games. I I, I think We Love is PS2. Uh, one of them is um. Xbox yeah, PlayStation PlayStation Two. But what's the Xbox one? It also. No, it didn't come out on 360 at all. Then what's the 360 one? There's a. Oh wait, no. Am I wrong? Beautiful Katamari. That was the 361. There's there's a another one that's already on the Switch. That's Katamari Damacy reroll. That's the first that, one. That will be free to play this weekend, like or something. Oh, nice. On uh, Nintendo Switch Online. Okay. Uh, Splatoon three gets DLC. Yay! Yay. Uh, Disney Illusion Island looks really good. Yes, this looks cool because it uh, it harkens back to the uh, Illusion ga- Illusion games on Genesis. Yeah, this really looks like a uh, freaking uh, old like Warner Brothers or Disney platformer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that so looks. I'm fun. interested in that. Uh, Harmony of the Fall of Revere. Uh, Revere. Okay. Uh, Professor Layton is back in the new world of Steam. Yay. That's cool. Uh, Professor Layton. Hard game. I tried. I'm too stupid for them. It's but, a little hard, yeah. Yeah, if you're not too stupid for them, go for it. Someone was trying to get me to like help them play it. Yeah. They were like, oh, I can't figure this out. Help me out. And I was like, oh, God, yeah, of course. It's a baby game. And then I looked at it and I was like, nah, yeah. I guess. Somebody else. I have no idea. Uh, Fantasy Life. Wow, cool farming game. Uh, and then Mario Kart Eight. Uh, uh next wave of DLC is coming in the spring, including a Yoshi's Island car, uh, course and Birdo. Yeah, it's weird that they got a character. Usually, there's no character. I'm surprised they didn't add a character in the other packs. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, why not? Yeah, give us more shit. Yeah. Uh, okay. Notifications. We got Joe Breezy. Thanks for the two months. Ah Webs. Thanks for the seventeen months. And Sue Casa. Thank you for the sixteen months. I'm just going to use the vouchers for Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, right now. Uh, yeah. So, where am I? Oh, yes. So, what did you think of the trailer? Anyway, of, of Tears of the Kingdom. It looks cool. It looked it looked nice to me. It looked exactly like Breath of the Wild. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only difference was the building shit. Yeah. Like it looks like you can build shit, which is huge because people play with the physics in Breath of the Wild so much. Yeah. And that's what got people to over a thousand hours of playtime. Yeah. So like actually developing for that, I think is is huge. Like having mm-hmm. people play with the physics to build shit is worth a lot. Yeah. So I always use breath of the wild as an example of a game that should cost more than 60 dollars. <laughs> we talk about uh game prices all the time and yes. how games used to cost like a lot more than they do now mm-hmm. so it's never a surprise when companies charge more or try to scam us into paying more or yeah. just raise the price of, of, of a game uh nintendo's been behind the other console manufacturers still charging $60 for the AAA stuff. And this is the first one where they have joined the rest of them and started charging $70. Um, They have uh, specified though, that um, this this, uh, price point is reserved for specific games. Uh, Quote, uh, we determine the suggested retail price for any Nintendo product on a case by case basis. A spokesperson for the company told game informer in a statement when asked if this was part of a new trend for switch games, Nintendo simply said no. It's also worth noting that Pikmin 4 comes out after this, and that is $60. Yes, and yeah. So uh, I believe them. However, didn't they do this in the Wii U era? Like midway or, or towards the end of the Wii U era? The game In the beginning of the Wii U era, their games were $50. No, the Wii era, they were $50. Uh, Once they went to the Wii U era, because now it was HD. Then they caught up with everyone else in those sixty. No. Yes. No, yes. because everybody was complaining that Tropical Freeze was fifty when it came out. No, it was sixty when it came out. No. <laughs> Help me out here. I remember that argument. I don't even know where to look up. Amazon. Camel, camel, camel. I use that a lot. Yeah, I do use that. That's the, the, so you can price chart. Uh, I mean. If if the Wii U the eShop was still up, we could check there. I doubt <laughs> they would have lowered the price. True. Uh, I think Camel 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 is down. Uh, 
All right, that's the greatest hits version. That's not going to work. Okay. This is surprisingly difficult to look up. Yeah. Uh, $60. Back in 2013, $60. Yeah, that's what I thought. Wait, when did the game come out? Came out is in it, it 2014. Because it immediately dropped down to $50. Okay. Which is what happened with Bomberman. Because Bomberman yes. R was $60, and before it came out, it dropped to $50. I think... I think with Donkey Kong, probably people were complaining by the about the price because it looks so similar to the one on the Wii. Oh, uh, right, right. What was okay? What Mario game was it that came out on the Wii U? Yeah, a new Super Mario Bros. U. No, what what Mario game? came out on the switch with bowser's fury uh new super mario brothers 3d world super mario brothers 3d world oh okay but then they also released new super mario brothers u for yes. the switch yes. okay that one was six dollars and it was also six dollars on the wii on the wii u yes yes yeah that would also make sense because that's I re- just- what were people fucking complaining about being being sixty dollars? I mean, it would make sense if people were complaining about New Super Mario Brothers U and Donkey Kong Country Tro- Tropical Freeze because those were sequels to Wii games that weren't substantially different. New Super Mario Brothers U on Amazon was ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents, <laughs> according to Camel Camel Camel. That is wrong. <laughs> yes. 3D Land 2, says King Wizard. Jarble the Freezer Switch was $60. Pretty sure Wii U version was $50. That's what I'm saying, but I yeah. can't prove it. Somebody give me a link to prove it. I, I could have sworn Tropical Freeze and New Super Mario Bros. U were $50 games. Skyward Sword HD was $60 and launched at $50 on the Wii. Yeah. yeah. That, I, I know the games are $50 mm-hmm. on the Wii. I thought in the Wii U era... They were fifty dollars games, and then towards the end of the life cycle, they started like sneaking in sixty dollars games. No, I think they've been sixty dollars games since the start. Okay, yeah. chat. I'm relying on you to show me old circulars or something that has prices on it for <laughs> for launch of Wii U games. Anyway, uh, you can get Tears of the Kingdom. With one of those vouchers. Did yes. we talk about the vouchers last episode? I don't think we talked about the vouchers. All right. Explain it. Va- explain what it uh, is. So basically, what is it? $100? 100 and a smackers. Uh, $100 it gives you two vouchers, which means you could buy two games with it. And you can use those two vouchers uh, to get any game on the, on the eShop that you want. You can get two full not, price. Not true. <laughs> oh, no? <laughs> no, it's a select uh, list of games. But... On the list of games, there's a, those are full price first party games. A lot of them. Yes. So there's fifty dollar games on there. Yeah. So you get two vouchers for hundred bucks. You yeah. need Nintendo Switch Online in order to get the voucher. Right. Two games. Mm-hmm. And two game vouchers, and it costs a hundred dollars. There are some games that are fifty dollars. Uh-huh. There's a lot of games that are sixty dollars. And now there's one game that's seventy dollars, <laughs> and it's Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. So when they announced the vouchers, the mm-hmm. vouchers was a way to get ahead of the price yeah. jump of Breath of the Wild. When they announced the vouchers, um, they didn't have any future games. The only future game they had on there was Bayonetta Origins. Yeah. Um, now, Pikmin 4 and uh, Tears of the Kingdom are both on there. Um, so I think the voucher thing is a great idea. Absolutely. Uh, I just think don't get the voucher until you see games on there that you want yeah and and if you're gonna get it for tears of the kingdom wait until tears of the kingdom is almost out to use the voucher because the vouchers can just go away like last time it lasted a year in america apparently they've been out in europe forever but in in america the vouchers lasted a year and they took your voucher away if you didn't use it yeah so that's messed up uh, here's an article from 2012 <laughs> from The Verge. Okay. Griffin McElroy. Wii U games will cost $60. There you go. 
Wii U titles will most commonly have a suggested retail value of $60, Nintendo has confirmed to Kotaku. We, now, again, this is from 2012. Wii U titles will most commonly have a suggested retail value of $60. Uh, both Amazon and GameStop have begun taking pre-orders for titles like New Super Mario Bros. U and Zombie U. Now, I remember Zombie U being a launch title. Was New Super Mario Bros. U a launch title? Yes. A Nintendo representative confirmed to Polygon that $60 will be the most common MSRP for Wii U titles, but that's a baseline price, adding that specific games could be more or less. More than $60 yeah. is crazy. That price is a $10 difference from the average cost of Wii titles, which run, ran, which run as high as $50. This is confusing me because this is an article from 11 years ago. Yeah. For first party and other major releases and can trend even lower, the average price of an Xbox 360 or PS3 game, of course, is already $60. Okay. So I was wrong. Yeah. Games on the Wii U were $60. So what the fuck were people complaining about then? I'm I'm telling you, I'm convinced they were complaining. Oh, wait, here we go. Okay. Uh, From 2018. Back okay. when the discourse was happening. Thank you, the Konami man. So thank you, K-Jack, for the Verge article. And thank you, the Konami man, for the Gamer Revolution article. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze on launch to, on Switch to cost more than its Wii U launch price. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is coming to the Nintendo Switch. The only problem with that, it's being anchored with a price point that's up to 10% greater than its re-release price on the Wii U from 2014. Nintendo's official listings for the title prices it up with selected retailers at $59.99. That, too, is the price it's going for on Amazon. All this despite the Wii U version launching at a lower price, $49.99, four years ago. Interesting. As of writing, UK and EU prices have not been confirmed. So what the fuck? So it was about the Switch port of it, not the Wii U version. That's just that's just what they said. No, no, no. Wait. Yeah. But uh, apparently Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze launched on the Wii U for $50. Yes. But yes. Uh, the Switch version was 60. Yes. Yeah, that's what I that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. Oh, okay, you were saying that they were complaining about the Wii U launch price. No, I was saying they were complaining about the Switch launch price. You never mentioned because, Switch in because this of the Wii U in this launch entire price. conversation. I was saying they were complaining about the Switch price because the Wii U price was lower. S- Switch was not mentioned once in your okay. little. This rant is what rant. I meant. Okay, this is what I meant. But okay, but Tropical Freeze came out after New Super Mario Bros. U. So yes. I was wrong anyway. I right. thought games started at fifty on the on the Wii U and then went up to sixty okay. mid. It's the opposite. They were sixty and then they fucking threw a fifty dollar game in there for yeah. some reason. So it's even more confusing than we thought. Yeah. So it's not your fault. It's Nintendo's. It's Nintendo's fault. So I I, I don't know what to make of that. Yeah. They just they they just fucking don't know what to do when yeah. gate when they <laughs> when the industry raises the price of games they're like i don't know we'll try out whatever yeah. I, I i think maybe they just didn't see the value in donkey kong they maybe. saw the value in yeah. mario and zelda and they're like donkey kong who's donkey. gonna buy this yeah. just make it 50 um so back to the whole 70 dollar price tag of games now. yes um so i have said on this podcast several times um it doesn't really pay to buy games at launch anymore Right, if they ever did, because if you just wait and be patient, you can get them on sale. You can get a good discount on them. You can get a really great discount on them in some situations. And for a lot of games, you know, the game of the year edition comes with all the DLC. However, yeah, I'm waiting for the however. <laughs> Nintendo rarely, if ever, lowers the price of their games mm-hmm. to anything approaching reasonable <laughs> for an old game. Like Breath of the Wild uh, is on sale right now for like. $35 on the eShop. But uh Mario Odyssey, which is the same age as Breath of the Wild, is still full price $60. <laughs> yeah. So I this game is not gonna be on sale for a really long time. No. So I think the best deal you're gonna get is that voucher. Yeah. So that might be worth it to buy this game at launch, but only if you have another game you want to buy with a voucher. Yes. Because 
maybe an older game with the voucher or something yeah. because you don't want a voucher sitting around because it could yeah. just go away and you don't know like don't get a voucher and think to yourself oh i'm gonna use it on metroid prime 4 or oh, i'm gonna use it on the next pokemon game because yeah. It might not be part of the voucher program. It's up to Nintendo whether or not they want to put it as part yeah. of the voucher program. So I might use a voucher. Save me 20 bucks. There you go. Why not? Because yeah. I know I'm going to use that second voucher. I'm fucking buying Nintendo games all the time. The only problem with that is I have to buy it digitally. And a game like Breath of the Wild, I might want to get it early. I might yeah. want to go to like a mom and pop shop and try to have them commit a crime and give me it early. <laughs> um. So, yeah. Breath of the, uh, Tears of the Kingdom is a part of it. Breath of the Wild is also a part of it. Um, yeah. Pikmin Four is part of the voucher. There's program. a lot of games on there that are frequently on sale. Yeah, so it's a little dicey to get those. Metroid games. Dread is part of the program, but not Prime Remastered. That's because that game is forty dollars. Right, and you would lose money if you did it. Seventy plus forty is okay. 110 okay. so you would save ten dollars if you did it with yeah 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 but the the, the yes yes <laughs> but you'd have to all zelda's the only game you can get where you would correct make a get a correct. discount uh um, but something to think about yes um i i mean look the the other two consoles have made the seventy dollar price point the standard by now. It was only a matter of time before Nintendo started to join in on this yeah. game. Um, it's just it's shocking that they're doing it with their current generation system. Yeah, you know? no, they they should have waited. That, yeah. Absolutely, I think it's I think it's crazy. But why this game specifically? Is it seventy dollars? Because they know they can get away with it. Because I think the game is going to sell just as well as it would have otherwise. Do you think? The size of the game has anything to do with it, because yes, we can skip to it. We can skip to that as well. It is the largest first-party Switch game in terms of uh, storage size at eighteen point two gigabytes. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. I mean, Nintendo's usually uh, real. I mean, Nintendo is really good at compression, like compressing their games yeah. and only putting in what is absolutely necessary. Eighteen point two gigabytes is nothing for a game these days yeah so that's huge for a nintendo game yeah but that's really not that big by comparison uh the second largest game uh the previous holder of this title the largest nintendo game was breath of the wild at 14.4 yeah i mean they're big games like like yeah i, I again people spend thousands of hours in these yeah. games and people spend a lot of hours in like xenoblade which yeah. also apparently is the third biggest at Oh no! Wait, yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles Three is fourteen gigabytes. Yeah, um, people spend thousands of hours in that, but they don't sell that well. Right. Breath of the Wild sold an insane amount. Mm -hmm. Zelda sells very, very yeah. well. So that's why they can get away with charging seventy dollars. By comparison, uh, of third-party titles on Switch, NBA Two K Twenty Three is fifty-three point seven gigs. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, third parties just don't give a shit. Yeah, and something like NBA that means you need. Uh, memory card yeah at least nintendo is trying to make it so you don't need to exactly, get a memory yeah. card you can just delete some stuff but yeah i mean it's unfortunate that you know i saw somebody tweet like this is the difference between somebody getting the game for christmas or not like 60 dollars versus 70 dollars. that's a pretty big jump i mean for yeah for people. a lot of people it is yeah so that's really unfortunate yeah. because people who would have gotten it previously might have yeah, to wait yeah, or, for a or lot of not people. Get yeah. I mean, look, take it from cheapskate me. I'm I didn't get the prime remaster just yet because it was the difference between thirty dollars and forty dollars. Yeah. For a game that I think is not, you know, honestly, I don't think it's worth forty dollars. I don't think a twenty year old game is worth forty dollars. But from the, you know, perspective of a business, they're gonna make yeah more money right from this. So it sucks for consumers. Yeah. Uh but it was inevitable. It, yeah. was an, 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 it was an inevitability that they were going to start charging what everybody else is charging. Yeah. It's just, it's surprising that, you know, we're getting $70 games on what is ostensibly a 1080p system. Yeah. 720p if it's just the, the screen in portable mode. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's what Mac plays in the chat. Just said 720p for $70 is wild. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean... 
we always talk about how resolution and frame rate don't matter as long as the game's good. Yeah. So, and we know this will at least be around the goodness of Breath of the Wild because it yeah. seems like the same fucking game. <laughs> so, whatever. I, I don't know what the next big triple like is the next mario gonna be 70 dollars? i have no idea I, I probably if this does well you bet your ass if it's a next gen yeah. uh, game then absolutely prime four is 100 percent gonna be 70 dollars. yeah i think yeah. i think anything next switch console is gonna be 70 dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. if mario comes out on the on the current switch maybe not 70 dollars. no nah, i think it would be if they keep the switch around for another year and release a mario game yeah okay. it absolutely would be 70 dollars. Okay. Because if, if they if Zelda shows them that they can get away with it, true. Why not? Good point. All right. What did the Japanese direct have that we didn't have? I didn't know that they. Uh, f- it was just one more thing. Let's see. Let's open this article up. Uh, f- not too mean. Not too mon. It is. Hold on. Natsu Yasumi. Boku no Yatsu Yasumi series. Yes. Uh, My Natsu The Yasumi. Japanese show uh, had a trailer for Natsu Mon 20th Century Summer Vacation, a brand new game written and designed by Boku no Natsu ya- Yasumi series creator Kaz Ay- Ayabi and developed by his studio Millennium Kitchen. Oh, that was cute. Uh, seemingly going back to the series roots, it takes us back to a time that looks like the 80s or early 90s and has us play as a 10 year old on holidays, go, uh, doing all the stuff mentioned above climbing trees, chatting with locals, spotting bugs, and some dancing. Will this come to the West? Who knows? Definitely not. No, this, this looks not. like uh, that Shin Chan game. Yeah. Uh, it's like exactly the same. Yeah. So the Boku no Nuts. Natsu Yasumi. Natsu Yasumi series, which has been running in Japan for decades, are basically a bunch of games where you play as a kid and get to enjoy a leisurely few weeks on your summer vacation, wandering around a town, catching bugs, and just soaking up the vibes. The main games in the series have never been released in the West until last year when Shin Chan, me and the professor on summer vacation, The Endless Seven Days Journey, dropped on Switch and PC. Oh my god. Natsu is summer. And Yasumi is a vacation. Oh, uh, there you go. Not my yeah. summer vacation. There, we learned yeah. something today. Yes, we did. So yeah, there's. If you live in Japan or you're into imports, there was an extra game in there that was not yes. part and of the. You, you have to know Japanese because yeah. there's no chance in hell this is going to have. But now you know about it, so when you're at parties, you could tell friends like, "Hey, did you know there was another game in the direct?" Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and there was also a, they didn't have Alone in the Dark for Game Boy for Game Boy Color. They had a different game. Oh, did they? Yeah, I forgot what it was. Oh, I did not know that. Japanese Nintendo Switch Online Game Boy. Uh, no. It was something we're not gonna be interested in at all. <laughs> Oh, it was a it was a mahjong game. Okay, yeah, <laughs> here it is mahjong. There you go. Congrats, guys! If you love mahjong, here it is. All right, people do love their mahjong. I think we got the better game. <laughs> <laughs> I would be interested to see like Alone in the Do- actually play Alone in the Dark on Game Boy Color because there was supposed to be a Resident Evil One port to the Game Boy Color that never came out, and Alone in the Dark New Nightmare looks exactly like that. It game. Supposed- yeah, supposedly the port. Is like pretty faithful to the original yeah. console PlayStation One game. Anyway, uh, that's it for Nintendo Direct and what Nintendo news. Yes, I think for the most part, There's some other shit, but that's the important stuff. Yes. Uh, FC FCS Gamer, thanks for the seven months. Oh yeah, Tuesday night. Oh yeah. Oh And yeah. Joe Breezy, thanks for the two months. If I didn't say that already. Uh, interesting enough, even if you have Nintendo Switch Online, unlike previous console emulators, you can't play the Japanese games on your American Switch Online. So what? I think you have to specifically get the... So, like, if you want to play Super Famicom games, you have to log in with your Japanese account and download the Super Famicom app onto your Switch. 
You can't just load up your... Yeah. yeah, so you would have to download the specific Japanese Game Boy Switch Online app in order to play yeah. the Japanese games. Yeah, that's yeah. what I do. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's referring to like if this was a regular emulator, you could just load the ROM into it. I thought he was saying No, I think he's saying that you can't download the Oh wait. I'm pretty sure so I added I added my Japanese account to our family plan. Yeah. So I use the Japanese account to download the Famicom and, and the and the Game Boy. Shit. Yeah. Uh yeah. So that that's what I would do. So yeah. so I don't think like I don't think on your account you can download the Japanese no. game. Yeah. No. You would need a Japanese I account need a Japanese, with yeah. a Nintendo Switch Online subscription. Yes. So get a family plan. Yeah. And then add the <laughs> Japanese account to your family. You get eight people. Yeah. Uh so there you go. Make a Japanese account, I'll add it to the family okay. plan. Um, but I really want to play Mahjong. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, all right. Uh, more, more news. Though. There's a lot yes. more news. Yeah, a lot, a lot of things, more news. That, a lot that of things happened can... that got thrown away because of the Nintendo Direct, mm -hmm. like uh, Sonic Origins Plus. Ooh. Oh, excuse me. Uh, over on the gaming sales spoiler website, better known as the Game Ratings and Administration Committee of Korea, there appears to be word of a brand new edition of Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog compilation, Sonic Origins, which first launched on PC and consoles back in June of 2020. And was bad, apparently. Uh, it had some issues with it. We yes. didn't. We were excited and then didn't get it because yeah. it seemed like it was worse than just using an emulator. Apparently, like, apparently, like it's better now and like they said at the time like if you know sonic the hedgehog like back in front like you would spot the issues with it but a casual person wouldn't right right um also the the music they got to replace the michael jackson songs suck yeah yeah that's uh, why and, like fuck yeah. it i don't want it. anyway the ratings board uh has released a new listing for the yet as yet unannounced sonic origins plus uh which applied for a registration back in december 2022 before receiving approval in January of this year. The title, much like the previous release Sonic Mania Plus, is expected to feature the original Sonic Origins compendium, along with currently unspecified new content. Back in 2018, Sonic Mania Plus added two additional characters, Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel, along with expanded multiplayer options and a brand new mode. Sonic Origins, released in part to celebrate the franchise's 30th anniversary, is a compendium of the first four titles in the Sonic the Hedgehog series, um, including the Genesis classics Sonic the Hedgehog 2, uh, Sonic and Knuckles, sorry, Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic CD, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. In addition, the title featured an array of new features, including Mirror Mode, Anniversary Mode, a chronological story campaign that sees the players run through all of the titles as a single adventure, smoothly transitioning from title to title. So they're trying to do what Sonic Mania did. Yes. And Sonic Mania Plus was pretty great. Yes. The, the um, mode and whatnot. But like, what can there? Uh, there was DLC for this game, mm -hmm. so uh, there was DLC for it already. So maybe the plus is like that, like it bundles in the DLC. But like, plus implies that there's more to it. Yeah. Like, would are they going to add more games? Are they going to add Knuckles Chaotix from the 32X final? I think it's literally just the DLC. Yeah, and, that, and that's it. But, I, I liked Sonic Mania Plus because it was like two dollars. Yeah. And uh, it added two new characters. Yeah. And then the mode where it rapidly switched you between all the characters. Yeah. And that was sick. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, hopefully we get something like that in this. Maybe I'll actually buy it. Because this game was $40 when it came out. Yeah. Again, for four... I mean, you got four games in it this time, but they were Sega Genesis games. I can't justify it because I could play it a thousand other yeah, ways. Yeah, I can. You know? every, every device I own can play a Sonic the Hedgehog game at some point. The only interesting so. part was the widescreen. Yeah. That, that all these games finally widescreen, yeah. but uh, in an, in an official way. Yeah. But if it's gonna run like shit in other ways, I don't yeah. want it. You know. Uh. Anyway, this was an interesting thing that happened. Uh. Microsoft confirms Game Pass cannibalizes sales. Yeah, right? that's a very harsh wording. Uh, the UK Competition and Markets Authority provisional report on the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition. Includes an omission from Microsoft that putting games onto its Game Pass subscription service cannibalizes sales of those titles. Oh, throwing up in my mouth. 
I got into a little bit of a discourse with OJ Player Essence on Twitter about this. Okay. Uh, because I mean, again, it's the it's the it's it it it's the they're fighting trying to pass through their uh, their acquisition of of Activision. Yeah. So they're trying to look like they're the small little guys who doesn't yeah. make any money. So of course they're going to try to say that. Game yeah. Pass doesn't make the money, you know? So that's the perspective that I'm looking at this in. Right. So go go ahead. Right. Read uh, Microsoft also submitted that its internal analysis showed that Redacted declined in base game sales 12 months following their addition on Game Pass, the CMA noted in its report. Uh, that confirmation runs counter to the claim that Microsoft, that Xbox had Phil Spencer made in 2018 that Game Pass boosts sales rather than undermines them. When you put a game like Forza Horizon 4 on Game Pass, you instantly have more players of the game, which is actually leading to more sales of the game, Spencer said. Adding, you say, well, isn't everybody just going to subscribe for $10 and go play this thing? But no, gamers find things to play based on what everyone else is playing. Elsewhere in the CMA's report, it cites that Microsoft, uh, that Microsoft, sorry, it cites Microsoft as saying that Activision took a dim view of on putting its titles into multi-game subscription services on any platform, believing that severely cannibalizing the buy-to-play sales, particularly in the case of newer releases. So yeah, Activision doesn't have any Call of Duty games on any of these streaming services, right? Right. They yeah. don't. Have, well, before yeah. this reason, because they don't want it to cannibalize the. Well, well, it's okay. That makes yeah. sense. Well, but now I'm cold. They don't have it. You gotta get worked up over game prices. Yeah, that, that'll keep you warm. They they don't have it on services where you actually stream the game, not like a download. Like, game. but it's not. A, none of the Call of Duty games are on Game Pass right now. Right, 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 right. right, right because right, right. because they were they're afraid that it would hurt the you know the buy to play model that they've been part of for years. Right, right, right. That games have been a part of for years. Right. So, I mean, it's interesting that we have like Microsoft it, like coming out and saying this. I honestly believe it because. Let's say you have a game um, and it's expected to make, uh, let's say, $10 million in sales. Microsoft comes along and gives the studio $10 million. Mm -hmm. So they give the studio $10 million. Is that what they were aiming for? Or did they miss out on possibly making $11 million, well, $12 million? I, I think it's different depending on the game. Yeah. I think that uh, for some games, absolutely it could hurt. Being on Game Pass could hurt their sales in the long right. run. But I think for some games, being on Game Pass will help them more than anything ever could. Right. Because it'll give you a large audience that you wouldn't have had otherwise and a guaranteed paycheck that you can use yeah. that you wouldn't have had otherwise. I think for smaller games, mm -hmm. that it's like Game Pass is a great thing for them. Yeah. I think for older games, that Game Pass is a great thing. Because it gives like if you missed a game when it first came out, now is your chance to play it. Right. I think as good as it sounds, Microsoft's whole all of our first party titles will launch on Game Pass, probably screwing things up for them. Because I don't think anybody bought Halo Infinite when right. it came out. They just right. bought Game Pass for a month. And then that was it. That, But that's... I think it's the opposite. I think for their first party stuff, mm -hmm. I think it's helping them because... Did you get Halo? No. Did you play Halo? You don't no. have Game Pass. I don't have Game Pass. Okay. Yeah. So you weren't you weren't going to get it anyway. No. I got Halo. I've had Game Pass for fucking like two years. <laughs> you know? Like I've been paying monthly yeah. for two years. I play Halo. And I play Forza every once in a while. I just try out Game Pass. Yeah. That's it. They got so much more money out of me because I've been paying monthly. You know yeah. what I mean? Like these people who are trying out Halo just once. Forget the subscriptions there, and they're paying monthly for yeah. it. That that's what that's the new model. That's why subscriptions are are. That's why all these companies are going for subscriptions. They're charging up the ass for everything's a fucking subscription these right. days because they're hoping that you will just forget that you're subscribed to them. But at the same time, like, are they making enough money off of these subscriptions to generate the content needed to keep these services afloat? You know, that's that's like the Netflix question. Well, th that's why it only works for their first-party studios because right. they don't have to pay a lump sum. They could just be like, "Here's 
Game Pass money, you you're under us. Yeah, you know, make us like get us numbers on Game Pass, and we'll right. continue to support the studio. Um, again, it runs counter to what Phil Spencer said in 2018. Yeah, he he said it makes it's better for the it, game. It makes sense on a certain point because, like, okay, let's let's use Halo again as an example. You get the game, your you get the Game Pass subscription. You play Halo for a month. You let your subscription lapse, but you really liked playing Halo. So you go and you actually buy the game to continue playing the game. Right. The problem is if you get a game, the problem is, you know, Halo Infinite did not have a good, you know, life after the campaign. Right. So, you know, the reason to keep playing it wasn't really there. So for a lot of people, they didn't buy it because they didn't like the multiplayer or, yeah. you know, the post game progression and whatnot. So yeah. I can see how like Game Pass could cannibalize sales in that regard. Yeah. A game like Halo is so big that it probably didn't need Game Pass. Mm-hmm. And releasing it for free was a little bit of an insane take. Yeah. Um, but a game like uh, Forza, I think it would help. Like, hey, Forza's big. Yeah. But I wasn't, gonna, Halo, pa- I wasn't yeah. gonna pay $60 for it. And now that yeah. it's on Game Pass, like, fuck it, I'll yeah. jump into it every once in a while. Yeah. You know? Same thing with Hi Fi Rush. Like, Hi Fi Rush is the first yeah. part of game. So many people are playing it because it's just on their subscription, yeah. you know? So. Again, I think it helps depending on the t- the type of game it is. Anyway, the discourse I got into on Twitter, apparently OJ deleted the tweet. So I oh, there you go. Came. But it was really just... Uh, uh, he said that he said this before and Xbox fanboys got mad at him about it. And I was like, yeah, but this is a court case. They have to prove that they're... Di-. That's why Phil Spencer in the past said that it yeah. helped. Because now he's trying to say it hurts because they're trying to prove they're a little yeah. guy. I mean... I, I I believe it. Yeah. You know, I just it's it's in crazy that it has to take this stupid court case to like yeah. for them to admit. It's it just it just But then okay, if it does cannibalize sales, then like what does that mean for Game Pass? Cuz well, that means people are not going to want to put games on it. Well, that's what the argument between me and him ended up that the ending ended up being yeah. okay, so Xbox values Game Pass subscriptions over the sales of individual games on their platform. Right. Which makes sense because okay. You you're locking them into a subscription. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get more than sixty to seventy dollars. Yeah, you're gonna, a year. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you have their credit card. You yeah. know, like <laughs> you, they're gonna keep paying you. So, yeah. for first party games, it makes sense. For mm-hmm. third party games, it's like we said in the beginning of the conversation. It's a little wishy washy yeah. because some games could be worth it. Some games could not be worth it. Right. So. And again, they're in a court case. They got to make it seem like they're not making money. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, more about the court case. More about the court more case. About the court more case. about the court case. Sony says that Microsoft's demands in the FTC case, this is in America this time, uh, are obviously harassment. <laughs> what the fuck? Sony characterized Microsoft demands related to the U.S. regulators' investigation into the proposed Activism Blizzard acquisition as obvious harassment. As reported by Axios, Microsoft has asked to see documents about seven Sony executives as part of the case and the and in the context of a subpoena it filed in mid-January. Microsoft made a reasonable request that SIC, Sony Interactive Entertainment, begin collecting documents from agreed-upon custodians at various points during the negotiations, including in writing on January 26th and the 31st, Microsoft said in the document. Um, SIC rejected these requests to Microsoft's counsel's knowledge. SIC uh, has not complied, has not completed collections for a single custodian, uh, not even for individuals like SIC president and CEO Jim Ryan, who has traveled the world speaking out against Microsoft <laughs> Activision deal and whose role as a custodian has never been in dispute. Sony replied the next day saying that given the high volume of documents relating to the seven individuals, collecting, processing, reviewing, and producing them is burdensome. Uh, Microsoft's demand for performance reviews for SIC's leadership is obvious harassment. It added, even in employment case, in, even in employment cases, courts require a specific showing of relevance before requiring production of personal files. The FTC filed a lawsuit to block Microsoft's proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard um, in December. Deal is also under scrutiny in the UK. Blah blah blah. Uh, Bobby Kotick, Activision CEO and noted supervillain, commented on the situation on Wednesday. <laughs> was, that, was that you or was that, that, was that me? Oh, okay. That was me. Um, saying the FTC, the CMA, and the EU don't know our industry. 
and that the UK will be more like Death Valley than Silicon Valley if it rejects the $69 billion deal. Holy shit. Yeah. So Yeah, he, he he's a crazy man. <laughs> he is a crazy man. And he did say that if the deal doesn't go through, he's staying. Yeah. That's so, crazy. Please let this deal go. Yeah, right? like, so like his ass out like, of Like, look, capitalism is is scary. It's got its problems. It's got its problems. But for some reason, I want this deal to go through. Yeah. Because <laughs> Microsoft, again, doesn't seem to have a problem throwing money away, apparently. Mm-hmm. So that's good for us. They got that, all that Azure and Microsoft Word money. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so, I can't wait to see a documentary on this whole Oh, my case. God. Please. Because they know. are th- – this is console wars all over again. They're yeah. really, like, yeah. bloodthirsty. I, I will buy – every single book about this court case yeah this seems insane yeah and yeah again sony has to fight against whatever microsoft wants them to do yeah. because it's a court case so mm-hmm. of course they're going to say that whatever they want is harassment sony has had some demands for microsoft yeah uh, we talked about that were a little crazy and microsoft yeah. kind of pushed back. not crazy but it's a court case so of course yeah. they're going to ask these things and microsoft kind of pushed back on it too so yeah they're, yeah, they're literally just at each other's throats yeah. saying Things that we know are obviously ridiculous, but they just have to say them because it's part of the court case. Yeah. And the people who are making the decisions don't know fuck all about the industry. I mean, yeah, it's it's true. Yeah. Like all the the, the UK lawmakers are the ones who have to determine what's going on with an American and a Japanese game company. Yeah. So they're in over their head. Yeah. Um. And furthermore, one more article about this. Um, the CM, uh, basically, Microsoft's Activision acquisition is in peril after UK regulators warn of the harm to gamers. Uh, the UK Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, already expressed concerns about the Microsoft's plan to acquire Activision last year, but now it says the deal could harm UK gamers. The CMA has published provisional findings in its investigation into Microsoft Activision deal and found that it could result in higher prices fewer choices, or less innovation for UK gamers. Uh, The CMA makes clear that it's mainly concerned about two things, cloud gaming and game exclusivity. The evidence available to the CMA currently indicates that Microsoft could find it commercially beneficial to make Activision games exclusive to its own cloud gaming services or of only available on other services under uh, maternally worse conditions, uh, says the UK regulators. Uh, the CMA believes that Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard that uh, would reinforce its strong position in cloud gaming, which the regulator estimates is 60 to 70 percent of global cloud gaming services. Oh, um, I have an article in there about cloud gaming regarding the stadium. We can talk about it a little bit. Okay, but it sort of backs this up. Uh, Microsoft could also weaken competition in gaming through exclusive Activision games. Um, the CMA provisional found. Uh, found that weakening competition by restricting the access of other uh, that other platforms have to Activision games could substantially reduce the competition between Xbox and PlayStation in the UK and harm UK gamers. The CMA now suggests a set of possible remedies for, uh, that Microsoft could take to appro- to get approval for the Activision Blizzard acquisition in the UK. This is where things get a little wild. They include a suggestion for structural remedy that involves the, a partial uh, divestiture of Activision Blizzard in the form of selling off the Call of Duty business. Other remedies, other remedies include selling off the Activision segment or the Activision and the Blizzard segments that would include the business associated with Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and other games. So basically what the CMA is suggesting, if you want this deal to go through, Activision and Blizzard have to break apart and like sell everything off. And like you could take some pieces. I mean that makes sense, but Call of Duty having the having the, uh, the 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 one of the choices being just selling off Call of Duty is crazy. Yeah, because I, I had to look it up. Uh, lo- we always look at the list of highest grossing media franchises. Call of Duty is up there. Yeah, thirty one billion is what it is grossed. Yeah, which is is would that be considered what it's worth? Because that's what it's grossed in its life it might be worth more than that okay yeah okay yeah because i'm trying to because like 
Dis- for example, Disney bought Lucasfilm for four billion dollars. Yeah. The Star Wars movies and the Indiana Jones movies and the the rest of like all the movies that Lucasfilm have uh, put out combined have not grossed four billion dollars. But the company as a whole and like all the other products they haven't grossed done. four billion dollars at, at the time. At the time, yeah. Are you kidding me? No. With merchandise and everything? With merchandise, yeah. But I'm talking about the movies. Yeah, but that includes the merchandise. No, I'm talking about just the movies. If you're talking about the gross of Call of Duty, that means just the games. Not including any licensing. Well, no, this is have. this is the total revenue of the franchise Call okay, of Duty. Okay, that's different. Yeah, that's different. Okay. And you're, bu- you're buying Activision. You're buying the rights to Call of Duty. Right. Full yeah. stop. So, if, if I mean, look, it's probably worth more than that like okay. to buy it. Okay. Um... What was I getting? Because you're hoping that you're gonna make more than that in the future. Like, yeah. you, you yeah. have to. You're looking to make you have to do at least yeah. what it did already. You yeah. know, and that's not easy. So throughout this whole this whole kerfuffle, the big thing was the big thing everyone's afraid of was like Microsoft is trying to take away Call of Duty. Like yeah. everyone's worried about Call of Which, Duty. Which like, there's so much more than just fucking Call of Duty. Right. But that just shows you how big and important Call of yeah. Duty is to the entire Activision Blizzard conglomerate. Yeah. Like, that's the main thing everyone's going after. Phil Spencer, on the Verge podcast, said the main reason we're acquiring Activision Blizzard is for King. Yeah. The mobile game company. Which I think is a lie. That is 100 100- Well, That's a, that's a well, straight up lie. Well... If they do wind up breaking out up Activision Blizzard and they Microsoft doesn't buy King mm-hmm. and tries to buy Call of Duty uh, or tries to take the whole company, you know, together, then we know goddamn sure it's a lie. <laughs> but, you know, this is Phil's chance to say, you know what? We really do just want King. We'll break up the company, we'll buy King, and then people can like pick at the corpse. I think King was the way that Phil Spencer got away with the merger with the other high ups at Microsoft. Yeah. He was like, Look, it's a mobile technology yeah, because, company. Like, you know? In his in his defense, yeah, Microsoft doesn't really have like a presence on mobile. Yeah. Like the way, you know, even Sony's got a presence on mobile. Microsoft tried. Yeah, they tried, they failed. But yeah. this could be their way back in. Like, so yeah. yes, I get that. However, you do not buy the entirety of Activision Blizzard just for King. Yeah, no. I mean, Call of Duty is a great little bonus. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's ridiculous. One of the one of the quotes in this article was a, was a bit absurd. Um, Please, a Microsoft acquired Activision Blizzard that would reinforce its strong position in cloud gaming. Yes. Uh, somewhere in the article, they said that they want an exclusive, that Microsoft is doing this because they want exclusivity of Call of Duty. Which is already they already committed to bringing it to Nintendo Switch, yeah, or Nintendo platforms, yeah. So, what else do you want? Yeah, and they tried to they admitted to trying to do it with PlayStation, but PlayStation didn't like the deal, yeah. so they're trying to bring it other platforms. Yes. Um, and the cloud gaming, yes, but right now you cannot play Call of Duty on a cloud service at all. Correct. So, what's the problem? <laughs> I think they want. They would probably want Microsoft to do something similar with other cloud services, like put Call of Duty. But it's on. not there now. Well, once. They so ha- what the fuck? Well, Why it wasn't there before? Once they have Call of Duty, that yes, you can put it on Game Pass, but you also now have to put it on Nvidia GeForce. Why? You have to put it on uh, Luna. How about just don't? How, uh, fuck it. You you're not you if you, if you're gonna do this to us, nobody gets it on cloud. <laughs> Forget it. It wasn't on cloud before. Made a lot of money. We just won't put it on cloud anymore. Could do that. Yeah. But then why bother buying all this if you're not going to put it on your cloud service? Because they could just put it on Game Pass without cloud streaming. That's true. And that's another thing. I think that this is another case of these lawmakers not understanding the industry because they're calling... I think that they're just calling Game Pass a cloud gaming service. When most, they really just most mean, of the games aren't cloud. Yes, yeah. I think they just mean putting Call of Duty on Game Pass at all. Yeah, I don't think they mean the cloud gaming, but they're using cloud gaming as a, as a talking point. It would be a big deal if Call of Duty was a platform exclusive, though. Yes, like I think it'd be a huge deal. Re- but they already said they're not doing that, regardless of like whatever like weird issues that like these regulators have, like not understanding games, like. I think they at least understand that, like, called the fear of Call of Duty going console exclusive is a big deal. Yeah, 
And yes, Microsoft is coming out and saying like we have made deals with Sony and and Nintendo and Steam bring Call of Duty to these systems. But is that enough? Is they said for 10 years, is that enough? Because Call of Duty is older than 10 years and it'll keep going beyond those 10 years. Will they keep bringing Call of Duty to the other systems past that? We've already seen that Starfield was in development before Microsoft bought Bethesda. And when they bought Bethesda, Starfield became exclusive. Yeah. That is a concern because there's nothing stopping from Microsoft. There's nothing stopping Microsoft from just keeping call. Like after the deal is done. Yeah. Going back on their word or, or, or keeping call of duty. There needs to be something in writing. Yeah. And we don't know what the deal with Nintendo is. Yeah. They, they said that they're committed to bringing it to Nintendo. I don't think we've heard anything from Nintendo. No. So we there needs to be something there. Yeah. And they didn't do it with Sony <laughs> because Sony doesn't want to write it doesn't want to sign anything because that'll look worse for them in the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. And Nintendo might not be saying anything because they don't care. Well, they don't want to be involved in the lawsuit at all. Yeah. They, they they might think that signing something with like they probably want call of duty like that'd be great if we got call of duty but they don't want to say anything because then they don't want the deal to go through either really yeah so you're right that i think that instead of all of this bullshit they should just force microsoft to put call of duty on other platforms yeah i think that that's the solution here instead of all this other fucking bullshit there we go. We figured it out. Hire yeah, us to, to, to do your stupid, to look at your stupid legislation. And, and, and put back Tony Hawk's three and four remastered in, <laughs> in development. Imagine sneaking that into a bill. Yeah. Anyway, what's the Stadia thing? Cause that's when, okay. part of it. Apparently when Google Stadia announced last year that it was, cl- when Google announced last year, it was closing down Stadia because the cloud gaming service hadn't gained enough traction. It wasn't abundantly clear exactly how the platform stacked up against competitors like NVIDIA's GeForce Now or Microsoft's Xbox Cloud Gaming. Now, statistics shared by the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, um, show that Stadia had a significantly smaller presence than rival services uh, with an estimated 0 to 5% share of the cloud gaming market in 2022. That makes sense. Uh, CMA said that its findings are based on the global information provided directly by each company, uh, the charts don't include actual figures, but Google and Google has remained tight lipped regarding how many subscribers Stadia actually had. However, insider reports that the service had around 75, uh, 750,000 monthly active users in 2020, falling short of its 1 million target for that year. The CMA's findings indicate that Stadia held just a uh, five to 10% share of the cloud gaming market by 2021 after launching in 2019 and was already being dominated by Xbox Cloud Gaming, um, GeForce Now, and PlayStation Cloud before losing ground in 2022. So here's the mar- market share for cloud gaming in 2022. Xbox has a 60 to 70% uh, share of the market. Then NVIDIA GeForce Now at 10 to 20, and then PlayStation at 10 to 20, and then Stadia and Luna both at 0 to 5. Damn, and Luna still going. Yeah. I was going to say still going strong, but no. No. <laughs> the CMA study uh, was conducted as part of a regulator's investigation into the Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Uh, throughout its uh, provisional re- findings reports, the CMA claims that the merger could prevent other platforms from offering competitive game library should Microsoft make franchises exclusive to its Xbox cloud gaming service and suggest that Stadia's lack of content con- uh, contributed uh, to its demise. We provisionally believe that content is particularly important to the success of a cloud gaming service, reads the report, particularly concerning Google's failure with Stadia, which our evidence suggests was caused at least in part by a lack of gaming content, which was connected to its use of Linux OS. So oh. that's what they're, that's their whole big concern. If, if Microsoft is making games exclusive to its cloud gaming service it's not fair to the other cloud gaming services that they don't have a reasonable competitor to it like we've seen we've seen Wait, uh, what ran on linux uh stadia it did 
you know, I believe you. Yeah. I, I just, if Stadia held out for a little longer, because <laughs> I think Linux gaming is bigger than it's ever been right well, now. Well, yeah, it's because Valve made a Linux yeah. kernel that can play games. If, if Valve... Di- so I watched a video about how Valve works, like the internals of Valve. Oh, I meant to watch that. It's like, it's the like hour... forty minutes. Yeah. yeah, I was very good. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was a ve- it was a little weird. It focused really heavily on like uh uh, uh like the d- diversity inside of Valve. Yeah. But uh, the most interesting part of that video was about how Valve just has like this open structure where there's like no bosses and you just yeah. do whatever you want yeah. when you work there. Um, so. The fact that like they do fucking anything at all is an anomaly. That's yeah. why there's no games being developed because there's nobody there. Yeah, you know, working on this stupid game. But if they made a cloud service, it would do very, very, very good. Yes, because everybody has Steam. Yes, and Steam Deck is already making Linux gaming worth it. Yeah, you know, so. If Stadia held out a little longer for that to yeah. happen, then Stadia should have sold to, to to Steam. Yeah, that would have been huge. I think the whole the whole point is, you know, if Call of Duty is exclusive on Game Cloud, then what is uh then what's PlayStation now going to do? Battlefield. <laughs> Everybody fucking hates Battlefield. I I forgot yeah. who it was. One of in this in this whole thing, one of the big takeaways was like somebody basically said. Battlefield sucks yeah. compared to Call of Duty. No, it like, does. Yeah, so. But I'm interested in uh, whether or not this statistic is talking about, like, is this statistic using the Game Pass subscription in general as a, a like, like a, like, Let's say you buy Game Pass and you've never used the cloud game before, but you have Game Pass because you want to play games on your Xbox like Halo right. and shit. Does your purchase of Game Pass count towards the market share of cloud gaming? I think it does. Well, uh, f- even if you've never played the cloud service. here, Here's the article continues that the CMA claims that Xbox cloud gaming held between 60 and 70 percent of the cloud gaming market by 2022. But that should be taken with a grain of salt. There are a ton of asterisks around that number, which the CMA spends two full pages addressing. For example, Microsoft and Sony's game streaming services are available as part of larger packages, such as Game Pass Ultimate and the PlayStation Plus Premium. Users who have access to streaming services through these packages may not actually utilize them as they're viewed as a free add-on, but were counted towards each company's market share by the cma regardless that makes a lot the of regulator sense. additionally says it's likely overestimating sony's market share in the, uh 2021 and 2022 by double counting some people who had used its game streaming its game streaming and were subscribed to both playstation plus and playstation now it's also difficult to accurately compare the figures as the data was collected at different times xbox cloud gaming figures were taken between january and september of 2022 while GeForce Now only provided data for January. Nevertheless, it's clear that Microsoft, Sony, and NVIDIA dominate the market for cloud gaming services with Google taking home the scraps. Luna also reportedly held between 0 and 5% cloud gaming market in September 2022. After launching in March of 2022, the service has made efforts to tempt new users to the platform using free trials, but has limited uh, limited reach as it's currently only restricted to U.S. customers. If Stadia's closure is anything to go by, Amazon may have its work cut out for it uh, to avoid Luna sharing a similar fate. Luna would instantly jump in market share if they gave a deal or roped it into uh, Amazon Prime somehow. Yes. Uh, I also, I was, so this that's interesting. This article said that the, the PlayStation Cloud Gaming is overestimated because of double dipping. Yeah. I was going to say it's probably underestimated because cloud gaming wasn't rolled into PlayStation Plus Premium started late last year yeah. or later in the year. Yeah. So there was like seven, eight months where it was just PlayStation Now and nobody yeah. fucking had PlayStation Now. So I was going to say it was underestimated. I would say if they do it this year, PlayStation Cloud Gaming is probably a lot higher. I would probably, if I had a guess, 30 to 40%. Yeah. 
um, probably dropping Xboxes down a significant amount. Uh, I lost internet. Do we still have internet? Yes. Okay. So it's just me. My internet's been fucked. Yeah, lately. I have no. I... Well, I have internet. So okay. You. Okay. Turn the Wi-Fi off and back up. I had to limit my uh, amount of devices. Like I had to limit the uh, the IP address pool for some reason. Okay. All right. I'm back. Yeah. Um, I also want to say thank you, Mystery Gifter, for mystery gifting Hannah, who should have a subscription. <laughs> Renew that prime. What are you doing? Damn, girl. Why you hate your man? <laughs> Bob, did you cancel your PS Plus sub? No, and I think it renewed itself. So right? speaking of all your internet problems, um, so last week we talked about how Sony was doing away with um, oh, yeah. the PlayStation Plus. Um, I forgot what I forgot what it's called. But basically, if you if you buy a PlayStation Five and you subscribe to PlayStation Plus, they give you twenty free games um, from their catalog included in that, mm-hmm. um, and they're doing away with that uh, later this year. And I had said, let me log into your PS Five so I can pl- claim the games I don't already have. And we then spend about an hour trying to connect your PlayStation Five to the internet for some reason. That's why I had to limit the amount of okay. Something's wrong with uh, the DNS on my router. Okay. Uh, it it doesn't want to update IP addresses for so, so a lot of times the router will just assign new IP addresses and for the most part no one will notice it's yeah. super quick and it just happens for whatever reason my router has an issue doing that right. and I don't use the i uh, the, the ISP's router I have right. my own so right. the ISP will sometimes that address renews every once in a while too yeah and that fucks up my router too so I got I got problems. Yeah. Hopefully this what I did the other day will fix it. Okay. Also, that what what prompted me to fix it was not just your <laughs> your little PlayStation thing. That was an issue. But we were playing Valorant, uh-huh. and it was like three o'clock in the morning, and we were winning a game, uh-huh. and then the internet dropped, <laughs> and then we lost. We were out. So Valorant is like best of twelve. Right. We were out for two games, and then we lost the whole game <laughs> because. The internet dropped. Right. So Hannah was very mad at me because I'm the network administrator. Right. And I spent like an hour looking at the logs of the router and it said DDoS attack. And like all this shit, like wind yeah. nuke attack and all this stuff. And I think that that forced the ISP to give us a new IP address, which crash the router and yeah. everything so interesting do you what router do you have the nighthawk one that we unboxed on wolf den live oh that like one yeah. five years ago okay which is a great router right but every time i have an issue with it and i look it up yeah people it's all i even i don't even look up the router that we have that yeah. i have i just look up netgear this issue and it always comes up that specific router <laughs> and the there is no answer the, uh, the answer is get a new fucking router because this router is a piece of shit I, I guess you gotta get a new router the problem is I do too much with this thing uh-huh. and if you just plug it in and want a router it's probably great but if you wanna tweak one little thing it's a useless brick I w- even though it's a gaming router it's like a right. Big beefy gaming router. So I am really I am an advocate for mesh networks, like because I have I've got two Google routers in my house, yeah. and I, we have the full mesh network. is great, it's beautiful. I I'm a little me. on mesh network. It's expensive though. That's the only problem. I w- I mean this thing was like we got it for free, but it was like yeah. a four hundred dollar router. Yeah, my but I know you like to plug things in directly. Yes, and the problem with the, the at least the router I have, it only has one. Uh, that, that, I, well you can get a network switch yeah because it wants you it wants everything to be wi-fi so that's my problem with mesh networks is you will think that you are you have a great connection because it'll have full bars but what if the mesh you know like is a little far away then the mesh network has to tell you that the connection's like eh. yeah it, it tells you if it's a little weak yeah yeah because yeah. like we we basically have it in opposite corners of the house I wouldn't mind a mesh network if all of the, like, what do you have? Three? I have two. All right. I wouldn't mind it if both were hardwired. You could do that. Yeah. But you have to like run cables yeah. to your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I wouldn't mind it if that was the game, yeah. but then I would have to run all of that, and that that's annoying. This router reaches everywhere, but then there's another, here's a new, <laughs> new problem I want to bring up. Uh, randomly, I'll be sitting in the living room, and the connection will just be a little shitty, and it's yeah. like, what happened? Or being in the kitchen, and the connection is a little shitty, but I learned that when it's a little shitty in the kitchen, it's because somebody's using the microwave. Oh, yeah. Which will do that. Yeah. But that's normal. Yeah. That's a normal thing. The one thing I hate about... Uh, my routers now, because you know, I had it back before they branded them the Nest routers. Mm -hmm. So you had a dedicated app, the, the Google Wi-Fi app. On I phone. loved the Google Wi-Fi yes. that we had at the parents' house. Yes, that's fantastic. Yes. But now that Google, you know, bought Nest and is branding everything Nest, and is basically ruining Nest completely. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not using Nest equipment ever again because of this. Um, they moved everything into the Google Home app. So you have to control your Wi-Fi through Google Home. Right. And it's not as good of an app for that as the dedicated Google Wi-Fi app was. Oh, that's a, that's very annoying. Yes. I loved the Google Wi-Fi. I worked for a, a, a t-shirt company that was all online. Yeah. And when I this was, what, 2014? Yeah. The entire company, over 30 people, ran off of one Google Wi-Fi. Yeah. And it's an internet company. Yeah. And there was there was one day where the internet was a little shitty, and the boss was like, "All right, guys, you gotta turn off your Netflix. Stop watching <laughs> videos while you're at work yeah. because you're hogging all of the Wi-Fi." Uh, Tab booms in the chat says, "Build a custom router." You could do fuck that. that. You can get firmware, special firmware, yes. like custom firmware, which I'm thinking about. Yeah, but that's annoying. Yeah. I've seen some, like, I have saw somewhere people recommend, um, I forgot. So a, a router that you buy and actually, like, an app, is actually two devices in one. It's, it's a router and a network, like, hub. Yeah. So if you buy the, those pieces separately, you might be able to get better connection. Okay. Then, I mean, you, you'll lose out on Wi-Fi. That'll have to be another thing. Right. You add on to it. But, like, that would actually be a better connection and like an all-in-one package right no that that yeah. makes sense yeah uh i did so i was talking about the issue where like the isp will come up with will, will change your is the isp will change your ip address yeah uh and just give you a new one and then that sometimes will fuck up the router yeah there's a th i forgot what it's called but you can put like a specific port or something and you put like a number in there yeah. And it tells the ISP, like, give me the IP address here and it'll be a seamless transition. And I had to do a little text chat with Verizon and be like, hey, give me your channel 61 number or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, what does, they're like, is there anything we can help you with? I was like, yeah, give me the channel 61 <laughs> number. And they're like, I'm not sure what you're asking. What? I was like, give me your supervisor or something. I need the channel yeah. 61 number. And they're like, Thanks for working with us. Uh, talk ah. to you. They like dropped the wow. whole thing. So part of me wanted to get like the business account so that I could have a guy and be like, give me this number right. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, I don't pay that much for the, like I don't even have like the yeah. gigabit. You know, I have like a consumer thing. Yeah. And I don't want to have to pay too much just so I can get that. So yeah. fuck it. Forget it. Forget it. <coughs> God me. bless you. Thank you. Anyway, that's okay. uh, there's, there you uh, there's your there's your uh, internet corner for yeah. the Wolf Boys. We took Cisco back in high school. We did. Both of us did. Yes. Cisco I, I was our high school had a Cisco networking class. I was told I had to take that and I did, Why? Cuz mom and dad were like you have to take that cuz you have to learn about computers. Why that? I don't know <laughs> because they probably saw somewhere that would look good on a college application so I had to take it. Yeah, they were really wanted me to be like a network administrator. Well, no, or some shit. no, I had to take it. I hated it, but I was stuck in it, so I had to take it for two years. And I complained about it every day. And then when you were eligible to take it, you said, "I want to take this." And mom and dad were like, "Are you sure?" Because Willie doesn't like it. <laughs> like, no, I want to. Do I this. did very bad in it. Everybody did. I'm very sure bad I did in it. very bad. But at the time when we were, because it was a lot of math. For some stupid reason. Dumb. We would have to like calculate subnets, which it fucking does automatically yeah, anyway. It was such a waste of time. But at the time when that was happening, me and our friend James yeah. would like 
steal routers from the school and like go to Radio Shack and like build fucking yeah. shit out of the routers and stuff. So we were like doing the stuff at home that wasn't applicable to the class because the class was all math shit. Yeah. Anyway. Uh Hey, let's talk about Dead Island real quick. Yeah, there you go. After far too many delays to count, Dead Island 2 has a new release date once more. This time, however, publisher Deep Silver is pushing the game up a week. Instead I cannot of a- believe this game is coming. I know. Out. Instead of arriving April 28th, as previously planned, the game will now hit consoles and PC on April 21st. You asked for it. You got it. Dead Island 2 went gold and is coming out a week early, the company said on Twitter. Notably, the change of release date means that Dead Island 2 won't land on the same day as Star Wars Jedi Survivor. The two games are scheduled to hit console and PC on the same day after EA delayed Respawn's new game uh, at the end of last month. Deep Silver didn't say as much, but after years of development hell, the last thing it likely wanted was for Dead Island 2 to compete directly against the big new Star Wars release. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Dead Island 2 was first announced all the way back in 2014. Over that time, it moved to two different studios before re-emerging this past August. The sequel to 2011's Dead Island will be available on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S, PC via the, the Epic Game Store. It will be the first game to feature Amazon's Alexa game control technology. Ooh. The, uh, that is no way this game is going to be good. <laughs> I, I'm shocked it's coming out. Yeah. Because it's been in development for so long. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no way it's going to live up to expectations. No. I mean, the first that island didn't really live up to expectations. Yeah, so I'm surprised it. yeah. that it's even happening at yeah. all. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, last thing, uh, new commercial for Mario. This was, this was the Super Bowl spot for yeah. the new Super Mario Brothers movie. It is basically a commercial for the Mario Brothers plumbing. You know what? Uh, I was going to show it, but I don't want to get yeah. a cease and desist. Uh, it's fun. It has the rap from the original Super Mario Brothers cartoon as the theme song for it. It uh, is great. Yes. Like, I liked this a lot. Yes. And... Did you hear what happens when you call the number that's in the commercial? I saw the video that Wood and Scoop yeah. put. Yeah. So you hear Charlie Day doing Luigi yes. for like a long time. Yes. And he sounds great. Yeah. He sounds, sounds really awesome. Good. You, I, I don't know why we're not hearing Chris Pratt still. Yeah. That that was a concern of mine. Like if this is Mario's business, yeah. why isn't he on the phone? I'm hoping Mario just doesn't speak a lot. But from what we've seen, it sounds like sounds he's like, probably going to speak a lot. Yeah. So I... I started off being really skeptical of this movie, but every little thing I see has been great. Yeah. Why did this remind me of the Ghostbusters commercial that they do in the in the Ghostbusters movie? Like in the in the movie, they do a fake commercial for Ghostbusters. Probably because it was not a, because of the bad acting towards the end of it. Because the I, bad acting and also the secretary is like a New York like, yeah. lady, but yeah. it was yeah, it's it's not the same as the Ghostbusters. No, because no. it remind. I was like, this is like the Ghostbusters, thing. and then I looked up the Ghostbusters commercials, no, and I was like, no, this is no, very different. The Ghostbusters one is very different. Yeah. Um, uh, also, I, she says Mario. Yes, yeah, so I was gonna say she pronounces it the way New Yorkers pronounce it. Yes. Uh, I forgot her name, but apparently that was the original voice actress of of Princess Peach from the cartoon. Yes. So that is great. Yeah. So far, looking good. Oh, and also on the website, what is it? SMB Plumbing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a website and uh, they have fake testimonials. Uh, Bro's mom. The Mario Brothers are the best in the business. They're polite, professional, adorable, and treat me like family because it's their mom. Spike is cool, says one star. There's no loyalty with Mario and Luigi. (laughs) The subpar Mario Brothers used to work for me until they decided to break off and start their own business. They'll learn their lesson someday. And then two stars, Brooklyn couple. SMBP left my house in absolute mess. I would have given them one star, but my sweet angel of a dog absolutely loved them. He just wouldn't leave them alone. Jeannie Elias is her name. Uh, The the Princess Peach. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. Here's the number on the screen. Call it if you want to hear uh, Charlie Day do Luigi. Also, apparently they've been uh, leaving some viral marketing around Brooklyn. They have like on like on like telephone poles. They have like a printed out like call super mario oh, really? plumbing and it has little things that you rip off yeah uh no i haven't seen those because i haven't been to brooklyn yeah i live in long island now where do you live on long island it's okay. been a while will sure. it's just been a while sure. <laughs> just making sure all right that's all the news yay i don't have a tweet of the week i forgot Boo. <laughs> i can get one okay get one while i open up discord to get ready to talk 
people who left comments on last week's Wilson podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com. Yes, of course. Podcast. What do you think of the Flash trailer real quick? It looks good. I did get chills when Michael Keaton walked up, looked me right in the eye and said, yeah, I'm Batman. I got a little cringe. I, I knew it was going to happen. It's just it's the thing. <sighs> so it's here's problem. like, yes, like it's cool. It's fun to see Michael Keaton doing Batman again. Um, I was reading an article on io9 that I based that I almost 100% agree with. At what point does fan service? At what point are we gonna like? It's, fan service has got to stop at some point. You complain about fan service a lot, and I think this is every this proves everything you've been complaining about. Yes. Like usually, I'm like, I'm a fan. I want to be serviced. Come service me. Yeah. But this, I was like. You're doing too much. Yeah, it reaches a point where like it's it 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 negatively impacts the product you're trying to yeah present to us. You know, it, it, it's a problem that's it's a big problem in Star Wars. It's a big problem in the Marvel movies now. Um, and the weird thing about the Marvel movies is that they're it's fan service to the move to the movies themselves, not even the source material. Yeah. So well, so with with. The Flash, I think one of the biggest issues for me is that it's doing that whole like uh, quirky, funny, like protagonist thing. Yeah. But it's Ezra Miller. <laughs> so like I can't look at him yeah, and be like, oh, what a charismatic, charming guy, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it like fucking ru- And there's two of them, apparently. Yeah. yeah. So it's double the, I don't want to see this. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a really hard watch. <laughs> yeah. But I, I know... Do you like Flashpoint, like the comic? I did not like the Flashpoint. Yeah, a lot of... Com- I don't think Mike did either. No. I think a lot of comic fans didn't like it. I liked it. I think I the, enjoyed Flashpoint. The thing with Flashpoint, the comic, is halfway through, you could tell that it was just supposed to be a Flash miniseries. Mm-hmm. That was it. Just a, just a quick Flash miniseries before going back to the main series. What happened was, halfway through making Flashpoint, the higher-ups of DC Comics said... We're going to use this comic book to reboot the entire universe and do the new 52. Yeah. So they had to redo the entire thing to make it fit into that edict. Yeah. And it, the book suffered for it. Along with like other problems of like your typical event comics where like if you want the full story, you got to read all the stupid shitty tie-ins. Yeah. Um, I think this movie has the potential to make a good version of that story. And just do what the comic was supposed to do. Because Flashpoint's been adapted twice already. There was an animated movie. And the Flash TV show adapted Flashpoint. Uh-huh. To similarly fine results. Mm-hmm. I think with this movie though. We run the risk of. Because it's on such a big scale. And because they're doing such big fan service. It's going to really affect. What the, the, the actual vision of the story. Is going to be. Yeah. So. I don't know. Also, this thing has been in development for like God knows how long. People people ask me like, why is this coming out with all the Ezra Miller shit going on? They've sunk more money into this movie than anyone in this chat or in this room will see in their lifetime combined. Like it is an ungodly amount of money. They have to make it back somehow. And if that means releasing this movie with a wanted criminal in the yeah. lead, then that means that. But also it has... They're going to use it to reboot. They everything. are going to use it yeah. to reboot. I mean, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's what the Flashboy comic was. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see if that works. James Gunn said this is the one of the best things he's ever seen. They're so. changing a lot. It's not all Flashboy. They're changing a lot of stuff. Yeah, but no, I like the idea of like the Superman thing that they're that was in Flashpoint and that they're doing kind of. Yeah, but I also think like, see, Warner Brothers has had this problem for a really long time where they'll think that these characters only have one story yeah. that that has ever been told. And that was what we got to adapt for Superman. It's the death of Superman for Batman. It's the dark Knight returns. And now for flash is flashpoint yeah. that does. There's like so many other great flash stories that they could adapt, but they choose to adapt that one constantly for some reason. Yeah. So hopefully this puts an end to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am interested I would have been interested to see Thomas Wayne. I think that's still possible. Yeah. I think that's the twist. I think that Michael Keaton's playing Thomas Wayne. Yeah, not Bruce Wayne. Even though you see the 89 car, 
You see all of his costumes from the yes. previous movies. You see, like, it, it's very clearly it's the Tim Burton Batman. Yes. But what if that's a red herring? And we go the whole movie thinking it's Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Thinking it's that. And then he's like, "Who's? how do you know Bruce? You know, he gets pissed off. How do you know that no, name? No, I feel like they specifically did Michael Keaton Batman because audiences are more familiar with him than they are the Thomas Wayne Batman from the comic book. Well, yeah. 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 Absolutely. They're more familiar with that. But Thomas Wayne's such a good story. Yeah, no, that was a good story. And then they just keep bringing him back for some fucking yeah, reason. Yeah, no. Anyway, hey, I found a tweet. Quit of the okay. week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! <laughs> Woo! Tweet of the week. Okay. Here he is. This is by Really BL Boosty, who says, Played the remaster of Goldeneye last night. This is the ugliest man I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. <laughs> I thought that was funny because yes, he is the ugliest man yes. I have also ever seen in my yes, life. Yes, that is. Uh... And I rem I thought of that too when I was playing the game, uh, the other day. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot how batshit fucking ugly yeah. these they made the guys for some reason. Uh, good times. Like these are probably just pictures of the developers. A lot of them are, yeah. But for some reason, they did something with this guy. Yeah. They made him, like, way uglier. Yeah, because, I mean, like, Dr. Doug doesn't look that bad. <laughs> yeah. They, like, I don't, they did some shit. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we're in the chat. Uh, no, we're in the last week's Wolfden podcast. comments from yeah. last week's Wolfden podcast very quickly. Yes. Uh, uh, you got it? I got it now. Okay. Uh, last week's Wolf Den podcast, we got King Rider says, "Babe, wake up!" The Wolf Den podcast video just dropped, <laughs> and Mike says, "Why is this podcast slept on?" Such a nice set. Well, thanks. Thank Steve. you. It is a nice set. Thanks, man. Emiliano Zamaripo says, "Was listening while driving, and the tweet of the week almost made me crash. <laughs> I got to lower it, apparently." <laughs> Uh, Nick in a van says if first party games on switch go the pr this price point, I am done with buying switch games for the rest of this generation. Well, you might not have long uh, left to buy it to not buy switch games. <laughs> Wait, what were we talking about we're, last? Week? We were talking because the rumor was that Zelda was going to be seventy dollars. Uh, remember like GameStop and oh and then we that was that like broke while we were live yes. and we looked on the eShop and, and we were, were like nah it couldn't be they were pulling down the prices yeah and then boy yeah. was I wrong <laughs> and now we have a huge paragraph yeah from Augusto Ramirez okay hold on Jesus Christ I am worried about the president uh the precedent of the price tag being raised for games because this means a few things for me. Games will go on sale less frequently. So Nintendo Select are now 100% dead. And games that are being ported over will also see a price increase with even less effort. So I'm not a fan of games being sold on Switch as a cloud version or using an emulator to run an AI upscaled version and calling it a remaster. Because if 3DS or Wii games are coming to the Switch, then they are going to cost more than the original price like we have seen with Skyward Sword and Tropical Freeze. Hey, remember that argument we were talking about before? Yeah. There it is. I have, I have another issue. Launch day games getting a price increase as more or and more games are released unfinished like fighting games they are bare bones and they sell a roadmap to finish the finished product so pokemon games aren't 60 they're closer to 90 what fire emblem oh because of the dlc fire emblem day one dlc expansion pass that is 25 to 40 dollars smash bros ultimate 60 plus dollar 25 dollars blah 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 well, you got the idea yeah. the fact that switch sports launched unfinished because golf was a free dlc like no that should have been included the first part I'm just depressed that we have been stuck in the cycle of battle passes, expansion passes to sell unfinished games. Yes. Yeah. That that all goes into play with charging more yes. for games. Yes. Um that game companies have been trying to figure out how to recoup their costs without raising the price of games and they do they were doing it with these weird predatory yeah. nickel and diming things that we've seen for yeah, the past with DLC years. with microtransactions with uh, yeah. cosmetics battle passes season passes the the idea is that if they just raise the price of games they won't have to do that shit but they're gonna keep doing that shit but and they're also gonna raise yeah the price exactly of games. yeah yeah that's just um, 
the unfortunate world that we live in. Yes. Uh, again, I will remind you, just wait. These games are not worth buying at launch anymore. Yeah. Unless you run a YouTube channel and you have to play Resident Evil 4 Remake around launch because people want to know what you think about it because you keep saying it's your favorite game of all time and you don't want a remake of it necessarily. Yeah. Content. Yeah. That's the answer. Make content and you'll make <laughs> excuses for spending a stupid amount of money. Yeah. It was totally worth it for me to buy that giant Darth Vader. <laughs> All right, now we're in the chat real quick. Yes, uh, Dark Spider David. Uh, Nintendo on Twitter is reporting that Metroid Prime 4 has been pulled from some sites now. Here we go. Yeah. It keeps fucking going up on websites. Yeah. Because one website will put it up because they speculate some shit. Yeah. And then everyone else will put it up and then they'll, because they don't want to lose out on the pre orders and then they all pull it down. This has happened like a thousand times. So, and it's happened with the trilogy too, the Metroid Prime trilogy. So, I'm not surprised about that at all. Okay, Jack says, I traded a guy a 256 gigabyte Quest 2 for the Xbox version of Hogwarts Legacy. It just had some scratches and chips in the corners, but it works great. Totally worth it for seventy five dollars after tax. What <laughs> is this a meme? Is it? I mean, that I sounds oddly it. specific. Is he saying the Hogwarts Legacy had some chips and scratches in the corner? No, the the Quest had chips and scratches. The Quest was worth seventy five dollars. Even with chips are you and scr- fucking out of your mind? <laughs> It's worth more than $75. Yeah. yeah, that guy got a really good deal. And it's worth more than a shitty game. <laughs> I, I'm i hearing, a, I'm seeing a lot of reviews on Hogwarts Legacy saying that the game's good. Yes. And I'm seeing a lot of reviews saying that the combat is good and whatnot. Everything I see just looks like fucking every yeah. third person action game we've seen from a AAA in the past 10 years. Right. And all the people that I talk to who play the game say it's the same boring combat that we've seen in other AAA games in the past 10 years. Right. But it's Harry Potter. That was what Hannah said to me. She was yeah. like, but it's Harry Potter. And I was that's, like, that's a good point. Because if I was playing Arkham-style combat in yeah. a game that wasn't Batman, I probably wouldn't have liked it. Right. Me. You know, I don't play Dark Souls games, but I enjoyed uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. So Yeah, I like Jedi Fallen Order more yeah. than I like. Yeah, and I think the fact that it was Star Wars helped. Yes, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, KJAC clarifies, I got it for $75. The guy was selling it for 150 or trade for a game. He just like, he just played it twice and never touched it again. Wait. He thought it was, oh, so you traded Hogwarts Legacy for the quest. You got a quest oh, out of it. Oh, that makes more got sense. Got it. You got the better deal. Yes. Okay. Congratulations. I traded a guy for a 256 gigabyte quest too. You win. Yes. You win. Okay. You did a good deal. That is good. Yes. Good on you. Holy shit. Okay. Jim Slap Slatter Snup. Apparently, there's a thread on rest- Reset Era in 2021. Saying they made the Metroid Prime remaster serving as a standard for future studios, including Retro, Galaxy Studios, and possibly others. Working on the Prime series and remasters going forward. Yeah, that makes sense. So there's a thread on... This thread is apparently from two years ago. Yeah. I usually comment on these, but given the irresponsible reporting around the project, understandably negative. I want to clear up a couple things here as the cat's out of the bag now. And Emily has already broken the news. Emily Rogers. I think I figure it can't do anything but help. First off, I don't know whether or not it's been announced in the direct today. I was expecting it to be announced in the E3 direct, but when they announced dread instead, I assumed they were going to hold off on the announcement until after dread. Uh, so I'd be surprised. They talk about today. Just so people understand. Okay, get to the point. Most every rumor that's supposedly leaked about Retro the last several years have been complete bullshit. The stuff about them doing Star Fox Grand Prix, remember that? Yes. And Labo stuff was complete bullshit. The only thing that is accurate was the rumor about the project they've been working on since Tropical Freeze released was canceled. That was true. Okay, I'm going to read this later. Okay. But Oh, wait, here we go. 
original Prime trilogy, they didn't want them making any changes to the design. They just wanted a one-to-one remake of the original games with new art built on to modern standards. Down to them even reusing the original collision meshes and just replacing the art. They didn't want to mess with perfection, so this was never at any point a simple remaster or any of any of the games. They were always planned to be full remakes. That sounds like the opposite. Yeah. But it was only the art that was being rebuilt, so that left their design staff with nothing to do. At the time, uh, NOJ was having issues with Namco's work on Prime 4. Partic- Did we even know that yeah. Namco was working yeah. on Yeah. Okay. Particularly the level design, so they started having the retro design staff start helping with the level design of Metro Prime 4. Meanwhile, art and programming staff were working on Metro Prime 1 Remake, after seeing the quality of Retro's level design work on Retro Prime 4 and the quality of their art for the remake, N- N- Nintendo of Japan decided, we are, why are we not just having Retro do Prime 4 altogether? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm going to read this later, but that pretty much confirms my theory. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I'd like to know more about what happened after the that retro just joined up over, yeah. with prime four because it sounds like they were helping make assets for the trilogy i want to know what made it because even this guy's saying it's a full remake but he also says they're using the collision meshes from the original so i don't know okay. I, I need to know i need to read yeah. more about that anyway Was there no no more notifications for this episode? No, uh, I'm I haven't read any. Uh, the toilet store. Thanks for the two months. <laughs> Mystery gift to gift a sub to Hannah and got Swifty. Thanks for gifting a sub to Lucifer's friend. Thank you. Thank you. The way Prime One has turned out, I wouldn't be mad if they dropped two and three ports with widescreen. Yeah, I mean, hopefully this starts a trend. Maybe the next director will be like, "Here's Prime 2. No, they absolutely are going to yeah. drop the other ones. Absolutely. Did y'all see where Ubisoft is partnering with UK police to arrest online players for talking trash? Oh, at least it's happening in the UK. I got to tell Jackson, because let me tell you, this man, we're playing Valorant. (laughs) All he does is talk shit to the other other team, people on our team. It gets fucking wild. Well, hopefully. And he's bottom of the leaderboard every time <laughs> well it's a good thing valorant isn't a ubisoft game because he can get away scot-free well riot i mean right i wouldn't put it past riot i guess the same yeah thing. did you see donkey's video on hogwarts legacy no it's very good yeah because it's not about hogwarts legacy at all <laughs> it's two and a half minutes long and he's like all right here i am with the new game hogwarts legacy sorry i didn't know about the controversy so here <laughs> i am with the new rick and morty game sorry i didn't know about the controversy and he just goes down nice. the list yeah. Anyway. Uh all right. That's it. We're way over time. That's yes. enough. We're done. All Thank right. you guys for having Thank out. you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. Whoa. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch, you can do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your preferred podcast of choice. But no matter when or where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms fuck i was about to raid willow i literally clicked on his stream yeah and then it said ending and then switched to our stream he just raided us ha! god di- willow got you us. stayed off for two seconds god i us. was about to raid you <laughs> well now i gotta raid somebody else okay. thanks thanks willow uh god damn it You know what? I haven't rated VG Dad in a while. Was he playing Marvel's Midnight Suns? Okay, okay. whatever, dude. Uh, go watch VG Dad. I'll see. I might stream tomorrow. I might do a wacky, weird stream tomorrow. I've been trying to. I think I might stream from my arcade cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll be a fun little time. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for being here. See you later. Uh, bye. Bye.